Hi, Stephanie from the She Can channel again today, interviewing women from all walks of life on how they got to where they are today. And today we have a very exciting woman, one of the most important women of 2023, Rupal Patel. Rupal, tell us what you do and how you got there. Wow, that's a big question. Uh, thank you for, for inviting me to be here for this conversation. So I guess what I do now is I am a leadership and talent development consultant. So I work sometimes one-on-one -on -one with uh, senior executives and sometimes with teams effectively to help unleash the potential within that leader or that team to help the organization perform better and to create structures that will enable the excellence that they already have within their organizations to uh, to come to the fore more consistently so that the company can perform better and people feel more fulfilled at work or more engaged and are also just you know performing at, at higher levels. So it's about high performance, about excellence and really tapping into what makes each individual excellent at what they do. Rupal, and you have a very interesting past. I mean, the beginning of your career was very different. So I'd yeah. love for you to tell us about that journey and how you got to this space where you yeah. are obviously advising others, but you're also a global speaker on yep. important subjects. And so tell us a bit more about your background. Yeah, so... Uh... I started my professional career at the CIA and I was and my my official title was analyst but because I enjoy not just the theory and sort of the the knowledge but also the practice I was able to craft a career at the agency where I spent roughly about 60% of my time at headquarters and about 40% of my time out in the field, working with our various uh, liaison partners and helping our uh, case officers refine the intelligence they were collecting. And through that experience, I realized that there were some really common threads in what I loved about that role, but also what I was really, really good at. And it was first and foremost was developing an expertise. You know, I am a lifelong learner. I'm a bit of a nerd. I still, you know, I always think that there's room to just expand, not just myself, but the world around me. So learning, developing expertise, then sharing that expertise to help others. So again, at the CIA, that was helping decision makers on foreign policy issues, everyone from the president of the United States to four-star generals and diplomats and foreign dignitaries. And then the third element was um, bringing people together and making previously uh, unusual connections, bring, making those connections in ways that would then amplify the impact, the abilities of the, the people or the organizations that I was connecting. So that, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's what I realized was the thread, but it wasn't until I spent time after leaving the CIA that it, it came to me that actually that's what I do in all of my work. That's what I love about many of the things that I've done. And that's what I always try to build into the things that I do. So after leaving the CIA, I started uh, my own companies. First one started, scaled, and grew that to a point where I could take myself out of the day-to-day -day operations. Still working on that, but very, very little. It doesn't need me very much. And then I was able to, about five years ago, or almost six now, um, start transitioning into the work I do now as a consultant, as an advisor. And like I said, drawing on not just the theory and the best practices and the, and the um, you know, all of the knowledge in the world, but also my own lived experience in growing my companies and engaging my own teams and in bringing out the best in myself and in the people that I work with. Rupal, you're an unbelievably inspiring role model and and you know that and you bring so much to the table. I'm wondering, you're a serial entrepreneur, you deal with really high profile people. What is the thing that motivates you most? Yeah, you know, for me, and this is something that I have only very recently uh, been able to sort of put a name to, but for me, it's positive impact. And you know, over the course of my career journey, there have been many, as for all of us, many challenges, many setbacks, um, difficult people, uh, people being uh, perhaps unkind, or even on the more extreme side of things, you know, people trolling you and people uh, just being terrible in a, in a public forum. And the thing that has gotten me over each one of those hurdles, each one of those setbacks, each one of those sort of slightly um, difficult moments or stretches of time is this 
uh, commitment that I have made to myself that why, as long as I possibly can, I want to reach as many people as I can and have as positive an impact on them, their lives, their businesses as I can. So for me, it's about having impact at scale. Rupal, and so can you tell me a little bit more exactly how you achieve that? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm still in the process, you know, I'm at, at what I feel are relatively early days, you know, five years into really focusing on this as uh, as my sort of guiding North Star, even though I've been doing it in many ways for, for most of my life, but it comes in many different forms. So, of course, in the work that I do with leaders and companies and then hopefully, you know, recreating, um, like I said, structures that will help other people who work in those organizations, or at least bring the best out of themselves. It comes out in the in the books that I write. So I published a book last year uh, called From CIA to CEO, uh, and I'm working on my second book now. So again, hopefully that will reach people all over the world. Um, and the cool thing, just, uh, you know, sort of that the idea about impact at scale, you know, having the book, I didn't know what to expect, but I get you know, totally random messages out of the blue, strangers from far flung places like Indonesia, China, Japan, Taiwan, you know, Saudi Arabia, all over the world saying, you know, I found your book at the airport or a friend recommended it to me and thank you so much. It's really helped me with this. And it's really incredible what um, the ripple effects that it's had in, in ways that I couldn't have anticipated. And it's, it's just really nice as an author to know that it is resonating in the ways that I wanted it. And then lastly, I uh, am a speaker. So I do one-off keynotes and I you know, speak all over the world at conferences and uh, both for companies and other large sort of event organizers. And that's another way for me to, to spread that impact and, and, and hopefully those messages that are not just inspirational on their own, but then I always leave people with tangible takeaways, tools, tips, things that they can do. So it's not just, oh, well, that was a really lovely thing that I heard, but actually now this is what I'm going to do about it. And this is how I can apply it in my life. Yeah, I, I thank you for saying that. I think that's very important. And I've really understood that when I researched you and got your book, etc. It's really about that, mm -hmm. giving people real um, tools to, to, to mm -hmm. get to, to where they want to go. Exactly. What would you say, Rupal, is your top quality or your top qualities that make you so good at what you do and they've carried you through from you know the CIA to what you do now I think it's that I pay attention so I pay attention to myself you know sort of as you may have found in, in reading the book a lot of the book is around self-analysis and self-awareness techniques that I you know developed for myself and have you know and helped others use in ways that are helpful for them, but I pay attention to what's happening to me, what's happening in the world around me, whether that's in my industry or, you know, in the, in the society in which I live, trying to identify problems by paying attention that, you know, I can or am uniquely placed to solve or at least contribute to solving. And then also just, you know, in interactions with individuals or even with audiences, paying attention to the room, paying attention to the mood, you know, what do people need and, and being able to respond in real time to actually, you know, this is what we were going to start discussing, but it seems like the energy has shifted and gone in this direction. So let's let's focus on that. Um, and also paying attention when I'm out and about in the world. You know, there are so many little interactions we have with total strangers and being, you know, aware of, oh, this person seems a bit down. So, you know, maybe just give them a nice compliment to hopefully lift their spirits for the at least the next few minutes. Or, you know, there seems to be a lot of uh, frustration in this meeting. So how can I change the tone to make it a bit more productive and focus on what we're trying to achieve. So I think it's really that that awareness of not just myself, but my surroundings and paying attention to the little shifts and to the subtle things that perhaps might uh, many other people might ignore. Rupal, thank you for your extremely incredible level of service that uh, seems yeah. to pervade your uh, all your work. Rupal, what are you most proud of to date? Oh gosh, uh, I'll choose. A, I'll choose two, if that's okay. Um, so I will say, first and foremost, I'm proud of the work that I've done on myself because I started my life, and for much of even my adult life, being very uh, having a lot of self doubt, a lot of um, insecurity, a lot of uh, just 
yeah, just feeling uncertain about, oh, well, who do I, you know, who am I, like, who, who do I think I am to want to be this thing? Or, or why would I be the person who people want to read, you know, books by, or all of that noise that many of us carry around. And it took a good amount of time, I would say, you know, sort of, well, I'm 42 now, so it probably took 42 years to some extent, but in many ways, a focused effort in sort of working on some of these uh, roadblocks that I've created for myself, it took, you know, the better part of the past sort of 10, 15 years both consciously and subconsciously. And I am at this place now where I am, I, I just love who I am. I finally accepted who I am, my strengths, my blind spots. You know, I don't make, I don't sort of uh, apologize or, or make excuses for the things that I, I my sort of my, my downsides or my blind spots, but I'm aware of them. And this, this place of self-acceptance uh, and acknowledging the things that I'm really good at it took a long time to get to. So I'm really proud of that because it's also made me, and this is the second thing I'm really proud of, it's also made me a much better partner, parent, consultant, advisor, and I can see the impact that it has on other people. And so, you know, sort of very, very concretely, I have two small, small daughters and becoming a parent has made me aware of how much children pick up and how the, the modeling that we do for them can really, really have an impact. And, you know, I have a six-year-old who's probably wiser than most 60-year-olds. <laughs> and yes, of course, some of it is her temperament and who she's going to be anyway. But I think some of it is seeing the way that my, my me and my husband live our lives, the values that we not just talk about, but that we actually live is having an impact, you know, and we are raising two incredibly aware, empathetic, uh, socially minded little people who want to use the privilege and the access that they have to make the world a better place. And that is, you know, I feel like job done <laughs> as a parent. Definitely. Rupa, that's why we're all here to be part of change that needs to happen because we, we raise the next generations. Yes, exactly. Rupa, what top tips would you have for girls and women listening who might have a roadblock, who, you know, start a, a company, who are just in that moment where there's doubt coming in? Oh, this is an easy one. Be very careful and be very selective about the inputs that you let in. So that's the people you surround yourself with, the conversations that you have, the books you're reading, the podcasts you're listening to, all of those inputs have an impact. And if you are trying to build something or grow something or change something, you don't have time. You genuinely don't have time or um, energy to waste on things that are gonna distract or detract from that. And so for me, what that looked like in practice was when I was starting my companies, especially the first one, I'd never started a company before, right? And there were so many people like, oh, it's so risky, or aren't you afraid of this? And aren't you, yes, of course, there are risks in everything we do. But I didn't spend hours and hours and hours with those people, those friends who were always, you know, harping on how difficult it was going to be. I limited the time I exposed myself to that sort of negativity or that doubt. And I focused on spending time with the doers, the people who were actually building their own businesses, the people who had done the thing that I wanted to do, the people who had proven that it is possible. And it was that plus, like I said, you know, the, the books that I was reading and the kinds of, um, yeah, like I said, the kinds of inputs, the quality of the inputs I was letting in, because there are a million reasons that anything will fail, a million reasons that everything could go wrong. And, and fine, you have to be aware of it, but you can't obsess over it. And so I would say be very careful about all of the, the, the information, the noise, the energy, et cetera, that you're letting in and curate it as best as you possibly can to make sure that the bulk, the vast majority of what you're letting in is moving you forward and not keeping you stuck. Rupa, that is brilliant, brilliant advice. And I think I really needed to hear that today as well. So thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Rupa, what plans and dreams and goals do you have for your future? Where is your journey going? Oh, uh, I think bigger and more, if I had to distill it into two words. So, uh, you know, reaching bigger audiences, speaking at bigger conferences, uh, having bigger impact, 
uh, and doing more of what I'm doing now, which is, like I said, you know, the consultancy work, the organizational work that I'm doing. And I never like to sort of, uh, you know, the way I sort of say it for myself is like, I decide the what, but which for me is the impact at scale, but the how and the when I'm a little bit open to. So right now I'm focusing on, like I said, my second book and, you know, I'm doing more and more of the, the corporate um, talent and, and leadership development programs that I do. But that might evolve in time to something maybe a bit different. I don't know what it's going to look like, you know, in the next 10 years from now. But for me, it's like I said, being open to the potential to have that impact, to to reach more people uh, in a positive, powerful way. But what the the means of that will maybe change right now it's books and speaking and 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 consulting but you know who knows maybe in 10 years it'll be something else thank you so much rupa that was a really inspiring conversation thank you for your time thank you for coming on she can and thank you to all our listeners thank you so much it was lovely to be here